of valiant young men, search for truth, the Zen way, for marathon wine drinking bouts, poetry jam sessions, and yab yum in San Francisco's Bohemia, to solitude in the high Sierras, and a vigil atop Desolation Peak in Washington State. Published just a year after On the Road, put the beat generation on the map. The Dharma Bums is sparked by Kerouac's expansiveness, humor, and a contagious zest for life. The Beat Generation was a movement of young people in the 1950s who rejected conventional society, favored Zen Buddhism, modern jazz, pre-sexuality, and recreational drugs. So today we're going to be doing something a little different. We just had a little bit of a snowstorm, so I'm just not going to go outside. So sometimes when you can't physically go out hiking or you can't do any prepping or planning, it really helps to get your mind right when you have a good set of books that you can focus on. So we're going to do kind of a book review. Right now I'm reading Dharma Bums by Jack Kerouac and I've got about 40 pages left. I'm gonna finish it today and give a little bit of a review. I really like this book so far because his name is like Ray Smith in this and he has another friend, Jaffe, Jappy. They kind of focus around this idea of like the beat generation, which I kind of talked about earlier. They're trying to figure out kind of what makes them feel free or alive. And in the book, you kind of see them delving into different things. They focus mainly on Buddhism, but also it focuses a lot about like hiking, the wilderness and kind of how restorative that is. And that's really where they get value. Even though they're going to these like crazy poetry slams and having these like wild parties and interesting interactions with other people. But first I gotta finish the book and then we'll talk more. style for writing is a little bit it's a narrative it's kind of like what he's doing but it's also his like thought process and it kind of gives this like jumbled vibe a little bit and it seems that one of his friends is kind of his spiritual guide he's also very involved in buddhism and they're trying to find enlightenment and he's the one who kind of really gets him into going into the sierras and climbing matterhorn and getting a rucksack and kind of living with the things that you have and how that creates value. I did think on a couple occasions that it's Ray Smith, so that's like Jack Kerouac. And, and through his actions, I kind of was like, he seems like very lazy to me. So it is written in like the mid 50s, so 1955. So I think that's interesting to take into consideration as well too when you are reading this book, just how um, revolutionary, how different, how astray it was from a lot of aspects of modern society at that time. And I think Ray's character, he, there's definitely an aspect of privilege here and he has the luxury of being able to hitchhike and travel and go to these poetry slams. He talks about that idea of having your rucksack and just going on the road and having this adventure. It's living with less and a lot of that parallels the idea of like a through hike as well too because you just have the things on your back but those things can be so satisfying and really give you a different perspective on kind of how you live your life and I guess it's like a physical manifestation and the proof is just that your feet take you there that you're in a different place every single day because you did that nobody else can do that for you and it's so satisfying and I feel like very few things you get that gratification that you yourself did this like building, creating, making something out of nothing. A lot of jobs you don't get that satisfaction of beginning to end. I like that wanderlust, wistfulness, and the idea that you can create these big adventures from these small movements. Even if you're not going anywhere, even in your daily rituals of what you're focusing on, I think a lot of value can be pulled from that. And especially now with COVID, you know, there's not a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of unrest. There's a lot happening. And I think that's one of my favorite things about this is, you know, less is more that 
you don't need that much and that nature is also very restorative and relaxing and you know where we go to feel like humans and it's something that we all have in common we all engage with whether it be in like a forest or even just you know nearby nature where it's like trees or plants in your house or something like that and how it reminds us that we're all human he means that the attitude for the barb the zen lunacy barb of the old desert paths see the whole thing is a world full of rutsack wanderers dharma bums refusing to subscribe to general demand that they consume production and therefore have to work for the privilege of consuming all that crap they didn't really want anyway, such as refrigerators, TV sets, cars, at least new fancy cars, certain hair oils and deodorants, and general junk you finally always see a week later in the garbage anyway. All of them imprisoned in a system of work, produce, consume, work, produce, consume. I see a vision of a great rutsack revolution. Thousands or millions of young Americans wandering around with rucksacks, going up to the mountains to pray, making children laugh and old men glad, making young girls happy and old girls happier. All of them Zen lunatics who go about writing poems that happen to appear in their heads for no reason, and also by being kind, and also by strange, unexpected acts, keep giving visions of internal freedom to everybody and to all living creatures.